Hi, I'm Scott at ediblemusic.com. When you're working with compressor attack and release times, you're working in spans of milliseconds and sometimes even microseconds. It passes by just like that. So how are you to differentiate between what might qualify as a fast attack or release time compared with a slow attack and release time. Let me help you get a sense of that. I've got some drums set up here and we'll start with attack times. I've set this one to 100 milliseconds and I want you to get a sense of how the compression feels as it's being applied to the drums here. What I want you to listen for here is the very beginning of the drum hits on the kick and the snare and the hi-hats and how defined those become. Now let's go all the way down to 10 milliseconds. You can compare between the two. A pretty significant difference, right? And it's because even within that 90 millisecond difference between a 10 millisecond attack and a 100 millisecond attack, that space of time, or that span of time rather, is enough for the transient information of the drum hits to travel through the compressor before it's fully engaged. If it's 10 milliseconds, it's moving up a lot more closer to that transient information. 100 milliseconds allows more of that to come through. This is an exponential difference too, from 100 milliseconds all the way down to 10 milliseconds. Let's see what one millisecond sounds like in comparison. So here's 100 milliseconds again. The quickness of that attack would qualify, I think, one millisecond to be a pretty fast attack time compared with 100 milliseconds, which is a slow attack time. But what I want you to really get in your mind here is that fast and slow are more relative to the speed of the transient itself. It's all in relation to each other. S similar to how you might think that you are a very fast runner, and I'm sure you are, I'm sure you're very speedy, but there are animals that can run even faster than that. There are cars that can drive even faster than them. And then there's, what, airplanes? They can go even faster than that. So there are, is fastness, there's speed, but the speed is determined in relation to what is actually qualifying it, and that's the speed of the transient information. Another exponential difference here from 100 all the way down to 1 millisecond, now compare how 0.1 millisecond sounds in comparison with 100 milliseconds. Here's 100. And at a 0.1 millisecond attack, you can feel the compressor start to push down on that very beginning transient information of these drum hits. You can feel at 100 milliseconds more of the smack on the snare and the kick. Listen to how that changes when I switch the compressor to 0.1 milliseconds. 
it lets a bit of the almost clickiness come through, but it doesn't allow any of the body of the kick drum in particular to fill up that space. Now let's go even further and go to 0 0.01 milliseconds. Switch to one millisecond from here. Now certainly 0 0.01 milliseconds is a lot faster than even 10 milliseconds and especially 100 milliseconds. And you can think about the way that the attack time not only relates with the transient information but in turn how that transient information situates the program element, the instrument that you're working on, within the stereo field, within the rest of the mix balance. So if I bring in these other elements here, I want you to listen to whether the drums feel more up front or more behind these other instruments. I'm just going to switch between extremes here, between 100 milliseconds and 0.01. These two other elements, the keys and the percussion, have very different interactions with compressors when you're working with them because their transient information is quite different as well. So fast and slow will vary. Here's the same compressor settings and I'm going to apply them from the drums instead onto the keyboards here. I'll switch between extremes here again between 100 milliseconds and 0.01 milliseconds and show you how that affects the placement of the keyboard in relation to the other instruments. Here's the 100 milliseconds first. Depending upon the attack time, the keyboards will feel more up close, similar to the percussion element, or if a faster attack time is applied, the 0 0.01 millisecond attack time here, then it will affect the very beginning of the keyboard, which will in turn move it backwards in the stereo field so that the percussion element will actually feel closer to you. Give, a, give your focus to that comparison here while I move through them again. And here's a 10 millisecond attack as well, which will emphasize the keyboard hits a little bit more than the 100 millisecond attack time does. Whereas 10 milliseconds compared to 0 0.01, still pretty significant. Just focusing on the very beginning of the note hits. When you're working with compressor attack times, a 0 0.01 millisecond attack time versus a 100 millisecond attack time is a pretty apparent difference between fast and slow. But between those is a lot of variation that depends on the kind of instrument that you're working on. Because if it has a very fast uh, transient information, like the secondary percussion element that does here, versus a slower transient information like the keyboard, then what's fast for a keyboard will not be nearly so fast for a very quick percussive element. 
but if you want the compressor to have a quote unquote fast setting, the key that you want to think about is how it what how it either emphasizes or de-emphasizes that beginning part of the sound. A slow attack time will allow that first part to come through more so than a very quick attack time. So it's in relation to the beginning of that sound. Release times, while they function similar to how attack times do, they'll have a very different influence on the way that the sound comes through the compressor. Here, I have a compressor that's just set at a 10 millisecond attack time. We're gonna focus on the release times now. And again, listen to the groove and the tonality of the drums as I switch between these. Let's start with the longest, which is a 250 milliseconds. Now let's go to the shortest at one millisecond. Now here we're listening to the tail of a sound where the attack time focuses on what's usually at the front end of a sound. The release time will influence how the compressor lets go and so it'll influence the tail of the sound that's coming through. And here with a longer release time, the compressor is remaining engaged and so the resonance that would come from the drums is just pushed all the way down whereas on a one millisecond release time it's allowed to come back up. There's some really artistic and creative uses you can make out of this. If you have a drum part for example that doesn't have a very sharp transient in order to help you get a kind of smack or punch coming through then you could influence the drums by having a longish attack and a short release which will just have enough of a moment between the hit and the tail to really emphasize that hit more. Whereas here, if you were to have perhaps too much resonance, then you could lengthen the attack time and keep that, keep that down. Now let's try some of these in between here. There's one millisecond, let's switch to 10 milliseconds. Now there, the way that the sound comes back in is a little bit more emphasized and it will be even further exaggerated if we switch it to 100 milliseconds. You can apply the same thinking to the keyboard. So if we push in this first compressor with a 100 millis or sorry, with a one millisecond release, The release is fast enough that the emphasis remains on that initial transient because it lets go quite quickly, or wants to let go quite quickly, even though the compression is still being applied here. What I want you to focus your ears on here is the way that the keyboard seems to sway a little bit with the slower release time, whereas with the faster release time, it's merely emphasizing the beginning hit on the keyboard chords. If I have it at extremes again between a 250 millisecond release versus a one millisecond release, And listen to that sort of sway to the keyboards as I move through and move gradually slower between these. Here it's sort of a bob. Extends the groove on that one. And now at 250, Now let's switch between extremes again. 
You might notice also that a slower release time actually makes it feel as though the part is a little bit slower paced, whereas a faster release time seems to quicken up the pace, even though nothing is really changing tempo-wise. If you switch between the, the fast and the slow compressors, When you're working with compressor attack and release times, yeah, there is a pretty big difference between 0.01 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds, and you would probably be able to know that the first one was faster than the slower one. However, between all of those, it really depends upon the program element that is being processed. So what might be a fast attack of 10 milliseconds on one kind of program element will actually be quite slow for another. And so it depends upon how the compressor attack influences that initial transient information. A fast attack will de-emphasize it, whereas a slow attack will emphasize it. And you want to just find on that scale what fits best with the element that you're working with. Same with release times. If you have a very fast release time, it will actually help to emphasize that transient even more because it's just going to pull down very briefly and then allow the rest of the sound to come through. Whereas a long release time will maintain the compression throughout the tail of the sound. And so it can also have an effect of emphasizing the transient, but it might lose the tonality of the sound that's being processed there. But depending upon how you set your attack and release times, know that it is determined in relation to the program element that you're working on. That's how you know.